Before we can define the concept of escape velocity, we need to discuss in detail the energy of a system composed of two masses. That is the first section of the video. Then, we will play with a system composed of a planet and of a rocket that's trying to leave the planet. That is where we will discuss the concept of escape velocity and derive its formula. Imagine the Earth suddenly collapses into a black hole. How big would it be? It would look like this the size of a marble. You could actually carry the Earth in your pocket. How do I know that? Well, I use a formula for escape velocity. I'll show you this in the last section of this video. Oh, I nearly forgot that. Uh, at the end of this video, I plan to add some slides which contain some solved exercises. These are for students which are actually studying escape velocity and gravity at school. So if you are one of them, after watching the video, I encourage you to go at the very end and check out these exercises. Working on them can be very useful to you. Consider a system made of two masses, big M and little m. Let's spin big M as the origin of a frame of reference. Like this, we can make it motionless. Little m, on the other hand, is moving relatively to big M. The energy of that system is composed of two types of energies. Kinetic energy, Ke, which is the energy of motion, and potential energy, Pe, which is an energy of position. The system's kinetic energy is due to the velocity of mass little m. It is equal to one half m multiplied by the square of that velocity. The potential energy of a system is related to the interactions between the components of that system. In our case, that interaction depends on the distance between big M and little m. Because of this, we can say that potential energy is an energy of position. The interaction is of gravitational nature, so here we are dealing with gravitational potential energy. Its value is proportional to the product of the two masses and inversely proportional to the distance between them. It is negative. Watch this video if you need to understand why. We now have the final expression for the energy of our system of two masses. Let's take a concrete example of such a system. A rocket of mass little m located on the surface of a planet of mass big M and radius r. The energy of the system composed of the planet and the rocket can be expressed by the equation we have just discussed. Before the rocket is launched, it is not moving. The kinetic energy of the system is zero. Thus, the total energy is equal to the gravitational potential energy. When the rocket launches, the combustion of fuel provides kinetic energy to that rocket. The rocket has now velocity, and the distance between the center of mass of the rocket and the center of mass of the planet increases with time. So the gravitational potential energy becomes less negative. It increases. The principle of conservation of energy imposes that the total energy of the system remains constant after the launch. In other words, the kinetic energy decreases with time. Let's consider three cases related to the amount of kinetic energy that was provided at launch compared to the initial gravitational potential energy. First case. The kinetic energy provided at launch is less than the absolute value of the gravitational potential energy. The total energy is thus negative. That means that after some time, the rocket reaches a height where the kinetic energy is zero. At that point, it stops moving. The rocket still has gravitational potential energy though. That means it is still within the gravitational field of the planet and therefore it starts falling back towards it. The kinetic energy increases and the gravitational potential energy becomes more negative. When the rocket reaches the surface, it crashes. 
and the kinetic energy is converted to other forms of energy, like heat or sound energy. Second case, the kinetic energy provided is larger than the absolute value of the gravitational potential energy. This means that the total energy of the system is positive. In time, the rocket reaches a point very far from the planet where the gravitational potential energy is nearly zero. At that point, the rocket still has some kinetic energy left. That means that the rocket will never reach a point where the kinetic energy is zero. It will continue moving on forever. In other words, the rocket has escaped the gravitational field of the planet. Third case, the kinetic energy provided has exactly the same absolute value than that of the initial gravitational potential energy. The total energy of the rocket planet system is thus zero. That means that when the rocket reaches a point where the kinetic energy is zero, the gravitational potential energy is also zero. In other words, when the rocket moves away from the planet, it slows down, and when it finally stops, it has just come out of the gravitational field of the planet. It escapes that field, but barely. In that case, the velocity of the rocket at launch is the escape velocity. The escape velocity is the minimum velocity required for an object located on the surface of a planet to escape that planet's gravitational field. Let's try to find a way to calculate this escape velocity. We have just realized that for the rocket to barely escape the gravitational field of the planet, the total energy of the rocket planet system must be zero. That means that one half mb squared must be equal to g multiplied by big M multiplied by little m divided by r. By rearranging this equation, we find that the escape velocity is proportional to the square root of the ratio between mass and radius of the planet. Yeah, it's important to realize that the escape velocity only depends on the characteristics of the planet, like its mass and its radius. It is independent from the object attempting to leave the planet. The event horizon of a black hole is the spherical boundary under which no information, matter or radiation can escape the gravitational pull. Let's position ourselves exactly on that surface. Is there anything that has enough speed to escape from that location? Yes. In an ideal case, a particle of light, a photon, can escape. It is not necessarily out of the woods because it is at the edge of being captured. But if it takes the right narrow path, it can escape. That means that the escape velocity at the level of the event horizon of a black hole is the speed of light. We can use this idea to determine the size of the black hole. In the formula for escape velocity, let's plug in the speed of light. We replace v by c. Now let's rearrange this equation so that the radius of the black hole's event horizon becomes the subject. We can play with numbers now. Let's plug in the mass of the Earth in that formula. What we get is the radius that the Earth would have if it were a black hole. 9 millimeters. That's the radius of a marble. Like I said in the intro, you could carry the Earth around in your pocket. Although you'd probably feel a little uncomfortable doing so. Do not feel anxious. The Earth will not collapse into a black hole anytime soon. Actually, it's impossible. Because the repulsive electrostatic forces between particles of matter are way larger than the attractive gravitational force. For the gravitational force to win, the mass of the object needs to be at least 1.4 times the mass of our Sun. So things being as they are, even something as big as the Sun cannot collapse naturally into a black hole. Still, I find it fun to calculate. You can try with other objects like Jupiter or the Sun or your cat. Just plug in the mass of the object in the formula. Let's finish with a little quiz. What if it did happen? The Earth, in an instant, turns into a tiny black hole. What would happen to the Moon? Would anything change regarding its motion? Let me know what you think in the comments. <laughs>